Director for the Arts. My name is Hyla Crane and I'm the Executive Director and I'm actually coming to you today from my office as opposed to our studio because we have some very special guests who are up there in our AV studio. They are Cheryl Costley and Mary Pat Palumbo. Hi. Hi. They are artists and they are members of Art Quilters Unlimited. And it is this group that is installing, I, I don't even have words for it, one of the most stunning exhibitions I have seen here at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. These are artists who work um, with textiles and as opposed to what you might think of as traditional quilting, which of course is an art, some of these artists um, really have delved into the world of modern quilting and it's just extraordinary. The scope and breadth of the work, the color, it's so dynamic. It, it, it almost You almost have a visceral response when you walk into our gallery. So I am thrilled to be joined by two of the artists whose work is there so that we can learn a little bit more about the exhibition, um, get a preview of some of the pieces and get to know these extraordinary women a little bit better. So ladies, um, tell me a little bit about the genesis for this show. How did this show come about? I know it's called Out of the Ordinary, but who was involved? Who came up with the theme? How did you put the art together? Well, uh, Jean Mao, who is a member and uh, lives on Marco here, met with the gallery committee here, uh, Barbara Parisi and you and yourself, Pilot, last year, and proposed this, gave pictures and told them about our group and the things we do. And your, the center here was very uh, receptive to trying something new and showing a new kind of art aside from painting and watercolors and and um, pottery and things. So this is just a different field, so to speak, and it's really been growing over the last oh, 20, 30 years, but recently yeah. in 10, because there's so many more materials available. But um, that, so we were, we decided to, this theme, I guess, was a group effort of, um, out of the ordinary because we use materials that you're used to, but in a new way. And, and of course, that could apply to the title of a piece too, like um, something about a storm or um, whatever. So um, it, it was a nice uh, theme because it works well with what we do and our techniques. Um, and so no, yeah, that's, that's how it all started. Is there anything you want to add to that, Cheryl, or is that sort of sum up how that's the exhibit pretty, that's got a good to summary, us? summary, actually, yeah. of the beginning. Oh, okay. I think our president, Dan Piscatelli, met with you also. Oh, okay. that I think so, day, too. The right. original mm -hmm. thing, but it's yeah. kind of just thrown from there, and yeah. here we are, and we installed it, it today, yeah. and it's exciting. Yeah, really. So oh, exciting. It, as I said, mm -hmm. I... Um, as, as some people already know, I am a huge fan of modern quilting. One of my best friends from when I from my hometown in Woodbridge, Connecticut, uh -huh. a woman named Sherry Safaldi Marl, uh -huh. um, has truly become a rock star yes. in the world of modern quilting mm -hmm. and is teaching. Her company is Whole Circle Studio. Um, check her out on wow. Instagram mm -hmm. or check out her website. It's extraordinary. Very. She was a graphic designer, and these pieces are just inspiring and yeah. fascinating. But Beautiful. within this show, mm -hmm. we've got 25 artists, 72 pieces. And wow. again, some of it is yes. on the wall, but there are pieces that are in the middle of the room, right. have a very three-dimensional quality. Mm -hmm. And I know that you ladies have taken a couple of pieces out of the exhibit and brought them up there with you. So Cheryl, can you tell me a little bit about the piece that's right behind you? Yes, this piece it was done by Sally Dutko, who is one of our very prolific artists. Her work is always very contemporary. I'll kind of, can you zoom in on that a little bit or not? I can move it over too. But anyhow, uh, this particular piece, there are lots of hand dyes in it. There's also a few commercial. It is totally done by hand. The title of it is kind of interesting because it's called uh, the CB19 Blues. 
So she worked on it over a period of, you can imagine, which months, and sought, sought help. I mean, you know, along the way, she would show parts of it and go, do you think it's too much? Do you think I should put more? Do you think? Do you think? Mm -hmm. And she got input from some other people, even though she certainly didn't always take that input. She, you know, went, went her own way. But lots and lots of handwork, uh, French knots, uh, ragged edges. It's, it's got lots of character when you get up to it. And it's extraordinary. Great. Again, it's it's one thing to look at this as I'm watching it through a video, but mm -hmm. these pieces, you have to see them to mm -hmm. really experience them because of of just the texture when you're using fabric and yeah. the way people have used it and put things together and the combination of materials, mm -hmm. it, it you have to see it to she really has appreciate a few beads, it. A few beads that I just now noticed on this piece. Right. Yeah, you Mary Pat. It. Yeah. The piece that's next to it, can you tell us, because I mean, I, I think, it, you know, it almost looks like an impressionist painting, yes. and yet I know that's not paint on the wall, that right. this is all textiles. Right. So this, the artist is uh, Lisa Gorski, and the title of the piece is A Moment in Time, uh, it, and it's what we call a confetti quilt. So it's all these colors are little bits of pieces of fabric, and um I was speaking with her last night about it and exactly kind of how she did it. Sometimes people put glue or something on the back, but that can be a pain. She said no, she didn't. She just put these little pieces of fabric on a layer, a basic layer, and, and you had to keep it still so no no fans or breezes or anything. And then she put a piece of, of tool, uh, okay. like netting, over it and pinned it a lot and then stitched down like sometimes you do it in a clear thread and just hold everything in place and then um sti stitched you know deeper like the black lines created this um this figure and and the depths of everything and of course the trees and branches and, and then she put another layer of tool over that and that she was able to use a little paint to highlight certain places and make these lamps glow more. And it, it's just fascinating that that is fabric. And yet, you know, you wouldn't know it. You really have to look at it and appreciate well, it. So. it. It's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. really beautiful. And, and we have another piece next to it. Um, again, I, I'm very fond when you see this hanging in the gallery of the way it's been presented, um, but I know that there's probably uh, something that has to do with the technique of how an artist makes that happen because right. it's really interesting. Yes. Um, well, this is uh, by Jan Piscatelli, and right now I've forgotten the title, but this technique is echo printing, where she would find uh, leaves or branches uh, out in her garden or on her walk and she puts them, boils them, I don't know the whole process, but steam, steam them, and uh, I'm not sure she uses a certain chemical, but she wraps them up in this fabric and lets it sit for a while so the color will penetrate. And when she feels it's time, she unrolls it and she comes out with these impressions of these leaves and okay. one of the really interesting things is whatever leaves you might choose don't necessarily produce a color you would expect so you might end up with a palette that uh you know you weren't anticipating and that's part of the fun that can be hard for some artists but for some that they love that uh and then to finish it she did a lot of hand stitching around it to emphasize the work and she added beads. She loves beads. I know Jan. So, uh, and she left the, the linen edge raw, like this sort of organic feel to, so you get the whole thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's very talented. I don't know the names. On I don't know the names that um, either. It's beautiful, and um, yeah, obviously we want to encourage everybody to yeah. come down and see this exhibition. Yes. And I, oh, I see that you have one more piece that's all right, right there on the table. Somebody want to talk us to, yes, about yes. that? I, I guess I'm being the talker. Well, I'm you know, sorry. You know these pieces. Sure. You know these pieces. That's fine. But uh, this is Jerry McKay. Um, 
who lives in Naples, and the name of this is Searching for Love. Um, and I know the background a little bit on this. I'm in a small group with her that we meet and create things together and experiment. And we, in our group, we had to work with these six fabrics, and we all exchanged them. And some, uh, like this orange one and this one, were in, in the mixture, but then you were allowed to do whatever you wanted. There were no rules, just do whatever you wanted. And she created this, you could add more or whatever. And I have a project that is using these fabrics, but others I added, uh, but mine looks very different from this. So <laughs> it's just uh, really fun that way, you know? Yeah. Well. Again, this is just a sampling. These are four pieces out of, as I said before, 72 pieces of artwork yeah. that are covering the floors or on display yeah. here at the Art Center. Mm -hmm. um, the exhibit itself is going to open on May 10th for all that. It, it's actually installed now. So if somebody wanted to come down and, and get a peek, they, okay. we could probably sneak Please them see. in <laughs> Thursday or Friday. Yes. I think we'll have all the tags up. Oh, okay. um, and it will uh, formally open on Monday, May 10th. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have our second Tuesday art reception, which will take place this Tuesday, uh, May 11th. And we hope this is free and open to the public. It runs from 530 to 7. And while we still are asking people to wear their masks inside the building. I know. Um, we will, of course, have a, we will have our wine sponsor, Total Wine and More of Naples with us that night, pouring some wine samples for people to enjoy and to taste. So you can go out in the courtyard, go in, enjoy the exhibit, go out, have a glass of wine and spend some time talking with your friends about it because mm -hmm. it's really, again, I, it is just, extraordinary we we have had some textile artists here before as parts of other exhibitions but we certainly haven't done one that has this many artists and the range of how you can work with fabric is daunting um things you just would never expect people have done to create magnificent artwork yes so we're thrilled about that mm -hmm. um Last question that I want to ask you, ladies, and I'm going to ask Cheryl first because I, I, you know, Cheryl, we've had your work here many, many times. I appreciate you've won that here. always. <laughs> we appreciate it at the Art Center, and of course, you are part of our gallery committee, so you are very important as a volunteer here at the Art Center. Um, with your work, who or what has been a major influence um, you know, for you as a textile artist? I, I learned to sew as a child, and then all the years of working for pay, mm -hmm. I, I never did art. I didn't even sew, yet I love to sew. And about 20 years ago, I decided to leave corporate America and become an artist. I did not have a clue what I was talking about. I mean, I didn't. <laughs> That's great. Those of you out there, wow. maybe you're saying the same thing. And so I took classes from every, if you, if you saw the list of classes I took those first 10 years, you wouldn't believe it. And I just decided I need the needed the equivalent of a PhD in something I didn't know anything about. Wow. And, and it's my life now. I mean, I know can't that. stay away from it. No. And I'm, uh, I've been a member of AQU uh, 17 years since mm -hmm. when it started. And uh, that's also been an inspiration. You can't believe how many classes I've taken through AQU. Yeah. So that's kind of my story. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and just so everybody remembers, AQU is Arts Quilters Unlimited. They meet up in Fort Myers. So right. we have artists from Fort Myers, Bonita, Estero, Naples, Marco Island. It is a... Uh, uh, a range of mm -hmm. people coming down. So for mm -hmm. somebody who is interested in um, perhaps connecting with Art Quilters Unlimited, what would be the best way, Cheryl, for them to do this? Just go to artquiltersunlimited.com. Yeah. Okay. We have our own website. Yep. And if you, uh, you can also call any of us. I mean, yeah. 
Or perhaps they can come to the exhibition, yes. come to uh, on May 11th if right. somebody's interested in learning more about this. And yes. I'm assuming we'll have lots of artists. Lots oh, of artists will be expected. Many of them, almost, almost all that are exhibiting, almost. Excellent. And if they don't make it on May 11th, remember June 8th, we will have a second reception. Right. So for artists who you might not meet at this reception, I right. hope that we'll have some more of them here on June 8th. Now, Mary Pat, who, um, if Cheryl's on our gallery committee, Mary Pat is a member of our board of directors. So she is also a very important person here at the Art Center and somebody who's, um, commitment of time, talent, and resources mm -hmm. is so meaningful to us. But my question to you, Mary Pat, is who or what has been an influence on you as a textile artist? Um, well, I learned to crochet first <laughs> in high school um, from a neighbor and uh, an older woman, and she taught us to crochet, and I absolutely loved it. And did that for a long, long time. Um, then later had children learn to sew, make clothes for them, and quilts later because you, you don't have to fit them <laughs> you can just, it's ready and you can use it you don't have to be frustrated at the end and then um well things were changing and you know i wanted to be a little more wider scope than just baby quilts and things and uh was down here and went to a qu show back like in 09 or something and saw work they did and specifically deb crying's work was in there that I really remember and meeting her and I realized her, she, her husband and my husband played golf together so I knew of her but you know I was hooked. Anyway, um, they were looking for a workshop uh, for chairperson and I was like well I'm, I'm up north what can I you know I asked one question next thing you know I was in, in charge of it so I ran the workshops for six years. We took did workshops together <laughs> and um, I learned pretty much what I do from this, from them. And it's been awesome. Uh, it's uh, not only the workshops, but the people themselves and to just meet up and see what they do, however different from maybe what I might do. Or I even learned that people have different favorite colors. Yes. I, I swear, in one of the classes, I'm like, oh, your favorite color is red? Uh, yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. I, I would just, <laughs> it's so crazy, but I just learned that. <laughs> It was awesome. So these have been great people, and Cheryl's a founding member of AQU. So really, I'm honored to know your work. <laughs> really, I mean it. It's been so we ride back and forth. Yeah, you know, in the meetings when we had Zoom's been nice. We've been doing some Zoom meetings, mm -hmm. so we kept going. And the art center too has encouraged me to do things and bring me out of my shell a little bit. So um, I'm not one to be putting things in shows often. So. Yes, you. This is new, but well, it's been I, fun. So, well, I happen. I was just talking to Cheryl about one of your pieces, which is one of my favorites in oh. this particular show. And of course, uh, Mary Pat now is an artist in our gift gallery, and we can't keep some of her pieces in. So. <laughs> Yeah, so she is. I'll show you what she's got in the gift gallery. Okay. It sells like hotcakes. Um, <laughs> so with both of you ladies who are so important and such valued members of our Art Center family, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being here with us. I want to encourage everybody who's out there to make the time. If you can come on May 11th, it would be wonderful where you can meet the artists. If that's not going to work for you, Marco Island Center for the Arts is open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. This is an exhibition that you really you want to yes. see. Yes. You do not want to miss it. Yes. Um, I do want to mention, while it, it, it is in our main gallery Sasha Singh who's a young artist is in our La Petite gallery her work is very vibrant very yes. colorful uh, a real compliment yes. to the work that you see yes. when you are in our main yes. galleries so please come on down any questions give us a call here at the Art Center 239-394-4221 and we look forward to seeing you last but not least this Thursday, the very last in our musical interlude series for our 2020-21 season, we will have Jack Branfield's Jazz Trio. We just did an interview with Jack last week. If you missed it, you can pick it up on our, you know, see it on our YouTube channel. 
He is coming in, coming over from the Frost School of Music, where he will have just completed his first year mm -hmm. as a graduate student. And he just uh, had his first, just, just, I don't know the term you use about albums. He just dropped, launched his first produced. album. I'm, yeah. I don't know, produced uh, his first album at the beginning of April. And we are thrilled that we can be the first stop in his album tour. So it's going to be great. Come out, support these young musicians, um, because you'll be able to say, I knew you when. That's Tickets great. are on sale. There's still seats on our website, uh, www.marcoislandart.org, or just give us a call, 239-394-4221, and grab your seats today. We are still out in the courtyard. Um, for the time being, although as the world changes, we are really hoping to get back inside very soon and are looking at doing some summer programming inside the Arts Center. Well, ladies, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all your hard work in bringing this exhibition to us, for the work that went into what was really a very major installation. And we really look forward, we feel it is both a pleasure and a privilege to have Art Quilters Unlimited work on the walls here at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. So thank, thank, thank you, you very much. so much. Yeah, we're so excited as, for having As I said, the, these are very important members of our Art Center family because when you come to the Marco Island Center for the Arts, you become a part of our art family and we welcome you and we strive every day to be what? You know, my friends, your art home. Thank you very much. We'll be talking to you again soon. Hopefully some okay. of these artists will come on and we'll get to meet more of the artists. Yes, cool. Bye-bye, yes, everybody. Have a great bye -bye. day. Thank you. Thank you.